Nick.com. If you remember that commercial, I hope you're having a nice retirement. Silly tagline aside, the channel Nickelodeon used to have some downloadable games you could buy off their website. These were part of their Nick Arcade series. In 2002, the companies Snap to Play, Retro 64, and Big Fish came together to create Obstacle Odyssey, a platformer based on the SpongeBob SquarePants series. While the graphics left much to be desired, it was a fairly basic platformer. At the same time, it was a complete reskin of another Retro 64 game called Best Friends. Later, the publisher Big Fish would release another SpongeBob game for the Nick Arcade, and this one was developed by a company called Midnight Synergy. Unlike other companies that used to work on SpongeBob games, Midnight Synergy is actually still active today. Kinda. Their website makes you feel like you've been teleported back to 2005. So how does their contribution to the SpongeBob series hold up? Let's take a look at Krabby Quest. When you open up the menu screen, you're met with some very pleasant music. The story is explained through pictures with text at the bottom, but unfortunately the text appears really slowly so I found myself hitting the spacebar to move to the next picture and I'd end up skipping over text that hadn't appeared yet. Mr. Krabs makes a bet with Plankton that Spongebob can make 1,000 Krabby Patties, which he's easily able to do. Plankton then does something that makes them all explode and scatter across the ocean, so now you have to go and find them. They don't really say what he did though. The intro uses images from the show, so it's kind of strange seeing them here when you know that the original context is different. They either had a low budget or Mr. Krabs was in charge of development. We're then brought to a map screen and the game commences. There are 60 stages to get through and each of them are in different worlds. Starting with Bikini Bottom, we're brought into this overhead view outside the Krusty Krab. You go around collecting Krabby Patties and reading signs that tell you what to do. You encounter some mechanics like this wind current that you have to ride in the right direction and the seaweed that can only be removed by hitting a button somewhere. Once you get all the Krabby Patties, you beat the stage. This truly is a Krabby Quest. The following levels have unique variations of the mechanics, most of which require you to move boxes to certain spots on the map. If you don't plan things out correctly, you might find yourself in a position where you can't do anything except restart. It isn't so bad at first, but it can be devastating in the later stages that require far more effort. You also have these colorful circles you can collect, but that's only if you want a high score. Even though they don't do anything, they're so tempting just sitting there like that. I mean, who do they think they are? Also, I gotta say, the character designs are improved from how they were in Obstacle Odyssey, but it is a little strange how Spongebob keeps this single expression on his face the entire game. I guess other facial expressions weren't in the budget, though he does stick his tongue out when you die and get launched into outer space. Eventually, you encounter enemies you have to sneak around, but their range of detection can be ridiculous in some levels. It's like you can't even go on the same screen as them without being seen. I do like that some locations include details like the buildings in Bikini Bottom. It keeps the stages from looking too repetitive. You can actually go into the buildings, but it doesn't really do anything. I thought it might have been a way to hide from the bad guys, but no, they can still very much see you. Also, the music for each world plays on an endless loop the entire time. The one you hear the most sounds a little arcade-ish. <laughs> Eventually, when you reach Spongebob's neighborhood, you can switch to Patrick to complete some challenges that require more than one character. Patrick can also move heavier boxes. It's nice to see that even though it's a simple game, it still has more than one playable character, though his single expression is even weirder than Spongebob's. As you progress through each level, you'll have to start strategizing more frequently. You have the ability to shift the screen so you can look around the map, which is a handy mechanic. At the end of each world, you get a bonus stage that ends as soon as you collect all the Krabby Patties or run out of time. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that every stage is timed. It sounds like an additional headache, but to be honest, you'll likely back yourself into a corner and have to restart a stage long before you ever run out of time. Once you finish Bikini Bottom, you head to the beach stage Gula Goo- Wait, the beach stage isn't called Gula Goon in this game? Could they not get the rights to that one location in particular? Clearly they knew about locations like Jellyfish Fields and the Kelp Forest, what prompted them to change the name of the beach? That aside, everything's just orange here. There are also these tentacles that shoot these bubble things at you. I gotta admit, the stages where you have to work around them can be really fun. 
This world also has beach balls that go flying whenever SpongeBob hits them, and they burst whenever Patrick does. You have to work around this and use them to construct bridges. However, things get really weird when the frogfish come in. They move in the same direction as SpongeBob and Patrick, but they come charging if they see you, so you have to strategically move where you want them to go. This is where the game starts to get a little less forgiving. From this point onward, every stage needs to be done in a very certain way. If you do even one thing wrong, you have to start all over. This gets especially bad when you have to do so much in the first place, then you have to reverse all that progress to start from the beginning. You might not even remember what you did right by the time you have to do it again. Talk about frustrating. But believe it or not, you can actually skip stages if you find them too difficult. You can get golden spatulas for getting high enough scores, then you can use them to skip over certain levels. It really comes in handy, trust me. Now the real headache comes in when you reach jellyfish fields and you have to clear a path for jellyfish to travel so they can collect all the Krabby Patties that are out of reach. Again, if you do one single thing wrong, you have to start all over again. Levels like this are agonizing because you can waste so much time, make a small mistake toward the end of it, then it's all for naught. Some of these stages can get so hard, I have to wonder how they ever expected children to know how to beat them. I use my golden spatulas way more often than I care to admit. They'll surprise you with a relatively straightforward stage every so often, but they become rarer and rarer the further you get. Thankfully, the jellyfish are only there for one world, then it's off to the kelp forest. Now I gotta say, this world design is beautiful. It changes colors and has really majestic music. This has got to be my favorite segment of the game. It's just so pleasing to look at. It makes me forget how infuriating the gameplay can be. Almost. The world after it is an original location called the Phosphor Caves, but its level design is very basic when compared to the Kelp Forest. It has ice you can slide on, though. These last two worlds focus more on the puzzles than they do on utilizing mechanics, which is fine because they're hard enough as is. Now, I do have to raise a bit of an issue I have with this game. After all the effort, pain, and suffering that it takes to work your brain through this gut-wrenching cycle of cerebrum exercising, the ending is as much of a non-ending as you can expect it to be. It's just a few images that go, woo, you did it, then it's over. Now at the end of the day, I gotta say it's an okay game. Really hard, possibly too hard for most children, but a fairly decent puzzle adventure. But... Remember when I mentioned earlier that Obstacle Odyssey was just a reskin of another game called Best Friends? Well, to be honest, I'm not so sure I trust this game after learning that information. Let's do a little deep diving and yeah, it's another reskin. That's right, Nick Arcade did it again. This game is reskinned from another Midnight Synergy game called Wonderland, which is actually their signature game. Thanks, Nickelodeon, I love being lied to. And in case you were wondering, yes, this was the standard for Spongebob games in the Nick Arcade. By the time they reached Diner Dash, they didn't even try to hide it. They just kept it in the name. Maybe this was a quicker way to release games without having to develop whole new ones, but it's a little disappointing that these games aren't as original as we'd like them to be. At the same time, it's still fun to go back to these every so often. They hold a certain air of nostalgia, even if they have their flaws. I guess Nickelodeon just has that effect on us. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.